Hello, everybody. Uh, Hello. Welcome to Dice Jailers. I'm Jordan. I'm Bjorn. And happy uh, first episode of 2021. We made uh, it! We've we've surpassed 15 episodes. Uh, thank you for everyone that watched through our, uh, our one shot, as well as who came through and was in the chat with us uh, when we did the rebroadcast on New Year's Eve. It was yeah, a great was time. Uh, we're going to try and do more one shots as time goes on uh Absolutely. just depends on when we can get our friends around yep uh and we're starting off this year with something big uh bjorn why don't you tell the people so we're actually gonna have structure for 2021 or at least for the first uh 14 weeks of 2021 yeah. as we're gonna go, go through all of the character classes in D 5e uh starting with the player's handbook in alphabetical order We'll tack on the Artificer and the Blood Hunter at the end. And uh, so, yeah, today's going to be about Barbarians. Uh, hey, hey. We're going to talk about um, which archetypes we like best, the ones we dislike the heaviest. And we're going to come at it a little more from our personal play style. This mm -hmm. isn't meant to be a, this is the most efficient class, or this is the one that you're going to have the best combat experience with. It's just what speaks to us the most and which ones we think best encapsulates that class, or in some cases, uh, fails to encapsulate yeah. the class. If you're uh, looking if you're looking for a min-max guide, uh, not this. No, uh, that, 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 you're not going to get that at especially all. Especially because of who we are as, as players and DMs, we tend to prioritize story more than just, like, mechanical boosts. Oh, speak which, for like, yourself. I, I freaking do both. Yeah, I mean, sometimes sometimes they overlap. Uh, I am going to have a high stat in my most important stat. Like okay, well that is yes, like, but if like, I'm starting level one character. Whatever my key stat is, I will have a sixteen or higher. When yeah. I start. <laughs> but that said, yeah. Before um, we get into that, uh, Bjorn, with New Year's and Christmas and all the other holidays and man, there was everything, lot. how yeah. you doing, bud? Not bad at all. Not bad. <laughs> Yeah, I got, so time is a little hinky. It all just kind of runs together. Yeah. So I'm not entirely sure uh, what day it always is. It's Thursday. I, th that part I know. I just never know which Thursday it is. <laughs> I know it's this Thursday, but I'm almost like, what, what, what week? Am I, what, what part of the count? What's going? Regardless. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the hair is getting longer. The the dice are always growing. And uh, ideas abound for 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 D and D, which is which is always fun, and <laughs> possible other creative ideas down the line. But we'll see how those those go, and if they Funny. take shape. <laughs> but hopefully <laughs> they're uh, interesting and terrifying. What about you? I've been I've been all right. Things have been kind of blah, uh, just because I've been uh, playing a big lot of the waiting game. Sure. Uh, but if you'll if you notice, and I'm sure someone will in a comment if I don't say it. You'll notice that uh, the the bar that is normally behind me is not there uh, because I've I've been waiting to start teaching classes again, and so web teaching classes you I do not have the I bar there. Yeah, no, no. Some of my classes are for like first graders, so nope, that's not nope. Can't can't do I that. Oh man, some first graders got like decent sized hands. They could work a cocktail shaker. <laughs> I'm not going to be Auntie Mame, and the first thing is teach the kid how to. <laughs> also, shout out for that reference for, like, three theater nerds. <laughs> you made, like, three college students somewhere in the world laugh. Right? The three that actually looked into that play that was a musical, and then a play, and then a movie, and then a play again, and then a musical again. Because why not? Oh God! Uh, but yeah, I've been I've been okay. I've, I've still been kind of blah because I don't. I've only started like the the workshop trainings, sure, sure, and figuring out how it's all gonna work. And I haven't actually started teaching teaching yet. But I will soon within the next week or so, which will be nice because it'll be something to do, which is important. Yep. Because sometimes if you, you got to do something to get all that energy out. All that energy, that energy that might turn in some sort of anger, uh, a rage, if you will. <laughs> you knew That's exactly where segue. I was going. <laughs> oh, no. God. Yeah, so um, 
I am absolutely going to kick this off, even though you didn't ask me to. It's I've your been, favorite class. It is. Go. Like, ah, uh, I'm wearing a, I'm wearing my paladin shirt today. I also love paladins, but there is no class I love more than the barbarian. Uh, if you go to your set or sets of dice, or you think back to that that first Chessex set you got in a little, you know, plastic rectangle, and you had all your little dice in there, and you made your character, and there was that one that you sometimes get confused for the D20. <laughs> that you're like, why is this in here? I never use it. It's because you're not playing a barbarian. That, yep. Um, this is the you old get joke a D12 that uh, hit die. Yeah. A D12. It's so much. It's so much hit points. You and get, you'll so you get need that. Points. You get all the hit points, and then the damage reduction you get on top of that. Mm-hmm. So when I when I look at a barbarian, I look I look at a couple things. One, you've got to have durability and staying power, which. All of them really have just by the natural rage and what rage yep. can do for you. And then I look at how can I boost my melee strength damage? Because the barbarian runs on strength. Yep. Yes, I know there are people out there who are like, oh, you, you could do a dex build barbarian. Cool. Good. I'm like, you could do that. You are now sacrificing one of the biggest bonuses rage gives you because you have to be wielding a strength weapon to get the rage damage bonus. Yep. If you're playing a certain barbarian class, which we'll get to, you could do that, and it doesn't matter, because in my opinion, you're not playing a barbarian. <laughs> but I'm going to start with my favorite barbarian. Um, it's in the player's handbook. You don't mm-hmm. need to buy any supplementals for it. It's the first subclass you come across in the whole player's handbook, and that is the Path of the Berserker, baby. Yay, yay. I love it. And I already know people want to say to me, well, but that Frenzied Rage gives you levels of exhaustion. Awesome. I'll get back to you on that in a minute. <laughs> the Berserker is great because it's, it's just straightforward simplicity and violence from your Barbarian. My, my favorite character I've ever played was a Half-Orc Barbarian. Yeah, yeah. Damage upon top of damage. If if he crit, things just died. Because yep. I was rolling my D12 so many times, my DM would just cry out for mercy. And it was beautiful. But with the path of the Berserker, okay, you get to the frenzy. We'll get back to that in a minute. The thing I love about it though, your seventh level feature, it makes it that you cannot be frightened or charmed while raging. The amount and, of times Bjorn has mentioned this to me in casual conversation yes. through the roof. Because there are like two things. One, okay, you, you frighten or charm the barbarian. If they enter a rage, it breaks that effect. If you're a DM and you have a group of players and one of them's playing a barbarian, there is a part of you that is looking at it and you're like, I'm going to charm that mf and I'm oh, going to yeah. send him at his allies. 100%. And few things are more terrifying if you're a non-martial character. If the Barbarian gets charmed and sent against you, that's a killing machine. Have fun dealing with it. Because again, if you're playing a Barbarian, your charisma save probably sucks. Yep. You're probably really easy to charm. And as far as being frightened, your wisdom save probably sucks. So without that, it's possible to frighten you. I still think fear should be a constitution save. That's a different conversation. Eh. That's a personal belief of mine, but whatever. Mechanics are mechanics. But the fact that you're invulnerable to those. Okay, your 10th level ability, that intimidating roar, it sucks. The ability is useless. You use your action, and they make a saving throw against, I think it's your charisma modifier. Yeah, something... That, like, personally, when I play Barbarians, I like to pump up the charisma, but that's just because of how I play character. And honestly, the, the way I get around that is usually for my intimidation, I'll always ask my DM if I can replace charisma with strength for intimidation as long as I do a feat of strength to try and intimidate. You know, that I'll used to like, just be a feat you could take back, yep. in, back in the 3-5 Pathfinder it, days. Exactly. And, and my other thing on the whole intimidating... Uh, ability of the berserker the leonin just gets that as a yep. racial ability and they use constitution for it they do which if you want fun house rule let barbarians do that and then lastly at 14th level 14th <laughs> level berserker gets retaliation 
if you're playing a barbarian, you're probably a melee character as it is. Yep. You're a tank. So as you get up there and tank things, being able to use your reaction to make a melee attack against something, you really make them not want to hit you. Yep. Don't give them any other choice. This is a great opportunity to use your grapple. And now you've got them grappled. Okay, they're not going anywhere. They're going to attack you. Sweet. Smack them right back. Yep. But I'm going to jump all the way back down to level three again, talking about that frenzied rage. Because there's a lot of, well, it gives you levels of exhaustion. There are so many classes that have abilities that you can only use once per long or short rest. If you just think of this as a once per long rest ability, that one level of exhaustion doesn't seem so bad. Okay, you have disadvantage on ability checks. Why is your barbarian doing ability checks? What, 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 I mean, they're not, because... they're probably not. Because you're throwing the gnome wizard across a pit. That's why you're doing ability checks. Whatever. I got a, I got a high athletics bonus. You'll probably make it. <laughs> not my problem if you don't. Should have had fly, buddy. But <laughs> barbarian casts yeet. It's the best spell barbarians have. It really is. The old fastball special. But but that's kind of how I can get around it. Um, if if uh, wizards were to come to me and say, hey, how would you like to tweak the Berserker? Literally, the one change I would make is you would get one Frenzy for free, and you would get levels of exhaustion after that. And it'd be one for free per long rest. Mm -hmm. I digress, though. I mean, I've, I, I played a Berserker from level 1 all the way up to level 13. The number of times I had more than one level of exhaustion from Frenzying, I think it happened maybe two times the whole time I played mm -hmm. him. And it was just because we were in a huge fight, okay good use of frenzy and then later in the same adventuring day we were in another big fight and mm -hmm. i just went you know what it is worth it to me to have the negative to have that extra attack every round and again this isn't like just using because you'll hear some people go oh well i'll use two hand axes so when i rage i get that extra attack on my offhand I'm like that's cool but you're swinging you're rolling a d6 for each of those as opposed to the mighty d12 and because barbarians don't get the two weapon fighting ability, that bonus action one, you don't get your strength mod on a hit. It's a big um, difference. I mean, but yeah, there is more geek there is than... another new way around it out of uh, Tasha's with yeah. the new feat of fighting initiate, be able to take another fighting style. But that's a whole other thing uh, but, that but, we'll talk yeah. about eventually. <laughs> I have I have gushed now about the Berserker. It is my. <laughs> Berserker Barbarian, there's nothing I love more in 5e. That is my absolute favorite. And I understand that out of a score of 1 to 5, most people give it about a 3. Which from a mechanic standpoint, I don't disagree with. But from a roleplay standpoint, mm. it is just it is the quintessential Barbarian. I'm going to take a low intelligence and when my party members sit around dithering and blathering for too long making plans, I'm going to let them know my barbarian's getting bored. And when he gets <laughs> bored, he makes decisions. But That's, I want to know. Like, that, that may be the scariest thing uh, that I can think of, is the barbarian being bored. Oh, hey, no. Yeah. Hey, the, the, <laughs> I warned them. I was like, hey, if you hear me say that my character is getting bored, it means he's going to make a decision real soon if you guys don't. And yeah. so whenever... I would just say, yeah, I'm getting bored. He'd be like, okay, we got to decide. Because if we don't, he's going to put an axe into someone. Yep. Probably a, probably a door. <laughs> or, you know, whoever we're talking to. Well, yeah, there's that. <laughs> so I got to know, me, if, yeah, what, what's the archetype where you're like, this is my barbarian? Well, the things that I like about barbarian that make, for me, that make a barbarian a proper barbarian, okay. I like to go against the usual thought of barbarian that's, big dumb i take all hits sure. i like to i like to go more on the on the side of the barbarian that's uh the barbarian is a a fighting style and a lifestyle sure. rather than just i'm big dumb strong it's like no he's a barbarian but he's a barbarian tribal leader or something like that uh i, mean, you, I also you get something like that with conan because conan yeah. wasn't stupid and I also, when I when I play characters, I like to, as much as, like, putting the highest stat in the key stat is important, yeah. uh, especially doing point by, I like to even out the characters a bit more than most people do. Sure. Uh, 
<laughs> a lot of people like to play extremes, which can be fun. I like to I li- I like to make my characters a little more rounded. That uh, which not everyone's cup of tea. I get it. Uh, but that's that's what I like to do. And uh, thinking about that with the barbarian, with with that big constitution, with that big strength, with yep. all of those extra hit points, the thing that that brings it home for a barbarian for me, especially when it comes to how I play barbarians, I love the totem warrior. The totem warrior archetype, that's my jam, my jelly, my butter, and my bread, yo. Yes. Like, because it's it's so cool, because you get that little bit of, like, yes, I'm a barbarian, but I'm a barbarian that understands nature and is in tune with the wild. And that's really, so, like, your rage becomes, your rage becomes this connection to either, like, your character's past or nature magic or just the world that you have around you. Plus, you have all the different choices to make that give you the extra flavor. Uh, and that's, you'll notice that's going to be a theme with almost all of my personal favorites when it comes sure. to classes, is how can we make the dopest story out of this and have, like, every bit of the character's class and archetype come into their personality and what makes that character that character? Because any class can be fun. If you play with it, sure. just like anything is a toy. If you play with it. <laughs> well, and what's great here, you're choosing the, the totem warrior also in the player's handbook. Yep. Uh, no supplementals needed for our favorites here. No, as much as I, I think the, the wild magic path, the new one is weird and like it's, it's interesting. I want to try it. Sure. But as far as, as far as it goes for like barbarians that I would really, really choose uh totem warriors got it for me. Because you get to take, you get to pick like bear, eagle, elk, tiger, wolf, and like any of those different ones, just personality wise, makes each different totem barbarian so vastly different from each yeah. other. Like, uh, as well as you can tie it into like, you know, you're from the clan of the eagle. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, your whole, you know, you can put a whole backstory into just that of like, you have. Like, if you take the time and you work with your DM to allow, like, you have an eagle companion, like, or part of your quest is to go out and slay a giant eagle honorably and, like, bring its feathers back. Like, there's so much to do with it. So as here... well as just with the with the level 14 abilities, when you really get to bump up. And also, you can pick multiple animals. That's my favorite thing about it. Mm-hmm. Like you don't have to stay just eagle the whole time. Uh, Personally, for me, I like to go with the uh, the base of be uh, the base totem, uh, the level three of bear, just because that's resistance. I was just gonna ask is go. Yeah, is there anybody who is not going to take bear at level three? I for story reasons, I can see a lot of people taking wolf. Sure. Uh, depending on your campaign, tiger is great too. But bear. Uh, elk is funny. Which what does elk do again? Elk gives you an extra fifteen feet movement speed, which don't overlook that. Yes. Yeah. Like, no, elk is funny because barbarian also gets extra movement as yeah. it is. And, and so then, while you're raging, you get an extra fifteen feet on top of the other fifteen feet you get, which can be absurd. So you just start outrunning horses. Uh, What's also great. Your DM will forget at some point. Oh, 100%. You will forget how much movement you have. Because uh, my, my DM, when I was playing uh, my Barbarian, mm-hmm. at times would forget about my extra movement. And so he'd have his encounter all built, and I was up in the face of his spellcaster. He'd be like, wait, what's your movement? I'm like, 45. Oh. Yep. <laughs> yeah. No, El- you're not wrong. Elk's great. Elk yeah. is great for that. Like Elk, Elk is really fun for that first one. Uh, I mean, the second one, I really like to take Tiger mm-hmm. uh, just because I like proficiencies in things. Sure. Like you were saying, like, why is a barbarian doing ability checks? Me. <laughs> I like doing, I like doing things. Sure. sure. Uh, but that's also because I tend to not play my barbarians as a battering ram. Right. Yeah. Like you, 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 you want to have a little more utility. Whereas I'm like, I, I want to be a very specified tool. It's like, because what, 
I don't trust the other people I play with. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you and I have to be more adventuring parties together. Absolutely. Like, I'll play the all-around spellcaster. And... and I will have one thing I'm really fucking good at. <laughs> You'll hit things. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Just be like, oh god, why is his axe on fire now? Fuck, why? <laughs> <laughs> axe on fire. Both a great weapon and a great band name. That's true. Uh, yeah. Hey, want to start an offshoot band? <laughs> there you go. Let's do it. Axe on fire. I'm in. I also really like a thing that people uh, overlook a lot with the totem warrior is the the tenth level ability spirit walker, uh, and that's just because a lot of games people don't often use the commune with nature spell at sure. all. But it's it's a wonderful piece of uh, of just utility in your barbarian's belt uh because like even if you are playing your barbarian as the like i'm a battering ram but you're still playing totem barbarian then you get that commune with nature like Great. if you're starting at level one you get it at level 10 so for a while your whole party has just been like oh yeah he's the big guy he hits things and then you hit level 10 and he stops and goes wait 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 yeah i'm spiritual and i understand nature <laughs> just just to throw people off <laughs> well but you know you, you touch on a great thing there i i think if you're playing a certain class um i i, I don't know anybody who doesn't look ahead in the book a little bit just to see what goodies they're going to get down the line a 100 percent. you, you want to know it gives you things to look forward to because like i mean shoot your first five levels of barbarian first level you have more hit points than everybody else second level you get reckless attack which um this won't surprise you i never attack that's not reckless like, yeah that yeah <laughs> why, why, why would i not I, you get advantage on everything what do i care that you have advantage some people on? don't like to get hit bjorn whatever i'm reducing the damage anyways i went toe to toe <laughs> with a demonic demigod and beat his ass reckless attack baby <laughs> level three you get your archetype level four you get an asi or a feat and if you're me at level four you're always taking the asi just because i want i want that stat Yep. I'll look at a feat at level eight, maybe. And then level five, you get extra attack. Yep. Like this is a really, really fun class. No matter what archetype you take, except one, and we'll get there in a minute. Um, <laughs> you're gonna have a great time and you're gonna do great, great things. Um yeah, if if I wasn't such a uh berserker fanboy, um yours, the Totem Warrior, it is one of my two honorable mentions that I like. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one is the zealot. Ah, see because for me the other uh, honorable you, mention for me is yeah. the is the path of the beast, the new one. That one's uh, interesting just because it's really cool. It's weird, yeah, but it's cool. Yeah, like I, I I'm with you. Like, I like the beast a lot because of the the variations you can have with it, and the fact that your mutation when you rage, whether you choose uh, jaws, claws, or tail, you can change it each time. Yeah, which I. I kind of dig that, and it's like, oh, I'm in a situation now where I'd rather be able to regain some hit points when I bite. Oh, I'd like to have that extra attack. Like, that's that's really cool. To or me. maybe I just want a tail. Yeah, because I mean, who <laughs> doesn't want a tail? Sometimes you just want a tail. Yeah. Uh, and so before we get into uh, the archetypes that we dislike, yes. Uh, I thought it would be funny. Okay. For me. I, I don't care if it's funny for the rest of you watching, but I thought it would be sure. funny for me okay. uh, for us to first talk about just the class as a whole, a thing that maybe is not so preferable. <laughs> <laughs> What's not preferable about the barbarian class? Yeah. Um, I To me, I think it's it's pretty easy to say is it's just you're, you're gone. You don't get a whole lot of skills. I mean, you can get some for your background, but you, mm -hmm. you don't get a whole lot of utility skills. Um, and as far as you're not wearing heavy armor ever, and the only because because you can't rage if you're wearing heavy armor. And the only reason I think that's important is there are some classes that you have to focus on one ability score for. Wizard, I'm looking at you. You don't care about anything but intelligence. Some classes, you have to focus on two ability scores. Mm -hmm. and there are some you need to focus on three. Paladin. Yeah. And the Barbarian falls between those two and three. And I think the classes where you have to worry about three stats 
can be a little harder to play. That's, because that's the characters that I play, baby. Yeah, like <laughs> you know, you, you're 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 going to need some decks to have something for an armor class, mm -hmm. but you're probably spending most of your campaign wearing half plate, because though you get unarmored defense, you would have to have a high enough constitution modifier combined with your dexterity modifier to exceed half plate plus dexterity. Yep. Which won't happen until fairly late in the game uh, unless you rolled for stats and you rolled out of your mind. But if you're doing, you know, point by or standard array, you are kind of constrained by that. You, you need to put good scores into those three just to have survivability and to have utility for your group, which means uh, intelligence, wisdom, and or charisma you are dumping at least one of those. Mm -hmm. You might be dumping two. Like, yeah. J just for efficiency, I'm not saying you can't have a more evened out barbarian, but because you're so specialized to those strength checks or attacks or grapples and that need to be tanking, mm -hmm. like, you, you just, if, if you only have a 13 strength as a barbarian or if you dump constitution as a barbarian, you are doing a disservice to your party. And I, I really think it's important when building a character stats-wise, it's important to be true to yourself mm -hmm. and who you want this character to be and who you think they are. But I think you have to take the other players into account because th this is a cooperative game. Yes. And, it, you know, I'm, I'm not saying you have to min-max everything and, oh, you know, if it's point by, go 15, 15, 15, 8, 8, 8 for your barbarian. Oh, gods, no. Though you, though you can do that, and I, I, I won't yuck your yum if you do that. Like, I, I will not look down on that. Hey, you want to have the most important stats high and the least important low. Cool. But if you're going, oh, I really want to have this like intelligent barbarian, so I'm having this 14 or 15 intelligence, and I sacrificed my con and dex a bit, all of a sudden, your other players might wonder, why do we always have to heal our friggin' barbarian? Why don't they have more hit points? Like that, that con modifier is important for those hit points. And I, I think that's the biggest place that the class suffers as a whole is mm. I think you mm -hmm. have to focus on two and a half stats, which I think does detract from some role play potential. I mean, get creative. You'll, you'll, you'll make it work. And honestly, there are times your rage damage bonus can feel a little underwhelming. Mm -hmm. Like, it starts at two, it caps at four. And I get it's on every hit, but when you start to you know, play through that long slog of levels where it's always at level, it was always plus three, there's a party that feels like, man, I, I wish I could do a bit more, especially if you're in a party with a rogue and you're watching yeah. all their sneak attack damage. And, that's, uh, and that, that leads into the thing that barbarians fall off for me, uh, is that your fun things that you get they aren't they aren't as like even of a curve yeah up like you get like some super fun stuff at the top and then it's a while and then you get some more super fun stuff and then it's a while uh and i always i i just when i'm dming worry about my players anytime that they're in that that kind of level drought where yeah. the the fun things aren't happening as at the same rate as their uh, as their other party member well, and, uh, and, that, and, and barbarian hits that hard i know I, I agree like as much as i love the path of the berserker when you hit that intimidating roar or intimidating i, I can't even mm -hmm. remember what it's called because i don't use it and if yeah. i'm doing pencil and paper i don't even write it down when i get it because because i know i'll never use it that level feels very empty and yeah. that, comes at, that comes at level 10. Like, level 9 was cool. You got Brutal Critical. Mm -hmm. That's great. And, you know, level 11's coming up soon. That, that's a proficiency bonus increase. And then at level 12 is an ASI. But that's in that mid to upper tier of levels where your levels are coming a lot more slowly. Yeah. So whenever you, if any class that has a level that when you hit it, you kind of don't care that that can be that can be a bit of a drag. Yeah, that level can suck, and that level happens pretty often for barbarians. Dep depending you know? on the archetype, like yeah, depending on the archetype. But like that happens a lot for barbarians, yeah. and that's that's one thing that really falls off for me. Also, just the 
the barbarian expectation. Sure. I dislike a bit because because I like to play off of type. Yeah. Uh, that it's so hard to play a like a fulfilling, satisfying barbarian without everyone going, okay, you're the barbarian. You're definitely the tank and only the tank. Yeah. Like, you, you, no, guys, I can do other things. I mean, <laughs> honestly, you, you have to know what you're getting into because unless yeah. you're playing a half-orc barbarian, only because the half-orc gets, I mean, they, they get brutal critical from level whatever. Yeah. Just because they're a half-orc, you, if you're in a party with a paladin or a rogue, you may find yourself a little disappointed in your damage output versus what they can do. Um, yeah. you know, br brutal critical is a great thing, but it takes, you know, I, I want to say that's, that's level nine where you get it. So mm -hmm. up until then, you know, even if you crit, okay, you're rolling, you know, two D 12, which is decent. Meanwhile, you've got your paladin who's rolling all these D eights for their divine smite, you know, and, and the rogue that that's just they, sneak attacking out of their mind. Yeah. So I think understanding that if you are, bar oh, you are a barbarian, in some ways, your constitution might be more important than your strength overall because you have to have the hit points. And it's you have to understand the importance of the role of a mm -hmm. tank. Your job is to get hit. And as much as that can suck for some players, like, well, I don't want to get hit. I'm like, man, reckless attack the day away because that's going to make more enemies want to focus on you, which keeps the hate off of your squishy allies. Yeah. If you're in a party with someone who has the capability to heal and you've got some good control or some good, you know, at least range spells, your barbarian can be the MVP of every battle. But, but at times, at, at times, playing a barbarian can really be a thankless job. Yep, and absolutely. It like it it can suck being that. Like, yeah. eh. but also, you know, you get that big old great axe crit and it booms back up. And, and the biggest thing I would say to, to combat the fatigue of being a barbarian, if you don't feel like you're doing enough damage, is like, get that strength score good and high, and then my friends, take great weapon master. Always reckless attack, and always take the minus five. Because mathematically, the way it works out, I mean, unless your target has a stupid high AC, you're going to hit more often than not. Mm -hmm. That's a plus 10 damage on every hit. And if you ever crit on a great weapon master, granted that, that plus 10, that part doesn't double. Mm -hmm. But when you're rolling all those dice and then adding on that modifier, you're, you're going to have rounds if you're a mid to high level barbarian where in a single hit, you do 50 some odd damage. Yeah. If you do 50 some odd damage in one hit and then tell your DM, okay, now for my second attack, Everyone at the table reacts. Oh, your party 100%. members, the DM, it just, you feel powerful. Yeah. But you, you got to understand the importance of soaking up those hits because you, you have more hit points than everyone else. So yeah, like you said, yeah. it can be a thankless job and there are a couple levels that can seem like a slog. And frankly, you will never have a quality ranged combat option unless you're playing Waterdeep Dragon Heist and your DM allows you to take Zaraj the Hunter's bow because it is a strength-based longbow, yep. which my DM let me take. And let me tell you this: that's he, he no, he regretted. Yeah, no, I no. He let me have that and a belt of fire giant strength. So double no, that's no that no that's too much for a barbarian. That's, it is. It is. Ooh. But but yeah, like uh, my barbarian we, was being a little broken for a stretch of time, and it was because of the bow. Yeah, because there was no enemy that could get so far away that I couldn't at least have a threat of hitting them. Right. Which that I mean, that's the other thing. Which with any true melee class, ranged stuff. I mean, make sure you have a lot of javelins. Yep, is all I would say. But put some javelins on your back, baby. Yep, ha have lots of them. But yeah, also also have be ready to if you know you're facing something that can fly or get away. Use your <laughs> grapple. Use that grapple. You know things, if you know there are enemies that are going to fly, athletics check, jump, baby. <laughs> Can't jump that high. You stop with that attitude. 
fair, <laughs> fair. But yeah, that's th those are the those are the critiques I would have against Barbarian yeah. as a class. I I don't think it's a good class for beginners, to be honest with you. Uh, I think you got to have a little bit of D and D under your belt, just because I think for a beginner they would see that Barbarian, they would see that Rage Damage bonus, and they'd think, "I'm going to crush fools with my great axe." I would I would counter with I think it's a great I think it's a great beginner one shot character. Fair, fair. Uh, for for low levels. Yeah. Well, not even for not even for low levels. I just think like for a beginner, give them a barbarian for a one shot and mm -hmm. they'll feel cool. That's uh, true. That's long true. running campaign, maybe not so much. Yeah. Though I will say, um there are some classes I think multi classing is very viable or even I won't say essential for, but um, they're fun. Yeah, like uh, we'll we'll get to this one in many weeks. But if I were to ever play a ranger, you can bet your ass I'm going to take a level in rogue, because mm -hmm. the two they just go together like peanut butter and jelly. They they're, do. They're they're so good. Also, we'll, like bar we'll, bar we'll talk about those yeah. on Ranger Day. But as far as barbarian, it is the one of the only classes I'm saying I would never, 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 never multi class as, if and only if I knew I was playing in a campaign that had the potential of going to level 20. Because the capstone ability for barbarians that you have unlimited rages per day, and on top of that, you increase your strength score by plus four, and you increase your constitution score by plus four, yep. and they can now exceed 20. Meaning if you have 20 in both, which at level 20 for a Barbarian, you better have 20 in both, you now have a 24 strength and a 24 constitution. And at that point, you have more hit points than some dragons. And I mean, Yeah, that's true. They're, they're young dragons, but still. And you have a 24 freaking strength. You that's... can also lift said dragon. Yeah, you could. You could. Yeah. <laughs> like you could be you could you could you know, get your hands on a young red dragon and be like, all right, one on one, let's have a wrestling match and you could rock bottom that MF -er. Yep. Uh so, I'm going to just just the image of a level twenty barbarian taking a young dragon and using it as a club. Right? <laughs> That's delightful. How like much extra damage would that be? I don't know, but I would just pick up a handful of dice and roll them and then just count. Like, Here, you did that much. Why not? Because it was cool. So, um, what? Because uh, we, we talked about things about the base class that we liked, yep. that we disliked. Uh, now for the the archetype that you would uh, put on your lower tier. So, there is an actual reason I'm wearing my paladin shirt today. It's not just because it's nerdy and we're talking about D&D. &D. Um, there is one archetype of barbarian that i absolutely loathe and the reason i loathe mm. it it doesn't feel like a barbarian to me it feels like somebody took a paladin and they put it in my barbarian subclasses and then it makes we me have mad. the same least favorite there is a barbarian archetype where you get no abilities that gives you a bonus to your damage potentially um you make it where okay, enemies would want to attack you because if they don't, they'll have disadvantage against other stuff. And even if they hit those, they would get resistance, almost like you're protecting them. Sounds kind of like an aura to me, Paladin. Oh, oh, oh we your... don't have the same one. Or you can use your reaction to reduce the damage they dealt. I'm talking about the Ancestral Guardian. Ah, so we do I, not have the same least favorite. I, I hate the Ancestral Guardian for Barbarians. <laughs> I look at it, and I read over it, and I go, this sounds like a cleric or a paladin. I, I, I love what it does from a mechanic standpoint. Like, if you are playing just to say, I want a good character mechanically, I'd be like, well, cool. Here's this character where if you hit an enemy, um, they can't really attack anybody but you. And if you see somebody within 30 feet of you hit one of your allies, you can reduce the damage by 2d6. I'm like, that's really cool. If somebody's like, oh, wow, uh, what class is this? And I go, barbarian. They're going to go, what? <laughs> and and I, I know that's pigeonholing a bit, but honestly, it, when it comes to, to classes in D&D, &D, I like to pigeonhole a little bit because there are certain things I want out of certain classes. Um, if I'm playing a cleric or a paladin, they need to be really friggin' devout, devoted to their deity, uh, unless they're an oath breaker. Different story. If I'm playing a barbarian, I want 
their rage to be important. And this, this level of protection, it doesn't feel ragey to me. It doesn't feel barbarian to me. And I'm sure there are people out there who can come up with a character they love for it, but it was of all the archetypes I read for barbarians, and I, I read over all of them twice this week, just mm. to look over all the features when I, I, I remember not liking the Ancestral Guardian, and both times I reread it, I found myself going, I can't see playing this and feeling like a barbarian. Mm -hmm. Mechanically, it's cool. Oh, oh my gods. You can use your reaction an unlimited number of times and reduce the damage on something? That's, that's big. That can change the course of an entire battle, especially at low levels. Mm -hmm. But I just go... I, I don't I don't get a barbarian sense from this. And then the the whole the first enemy you hit in a round, if they target anyone that's not you, it's at disadvantage. And even if they hit them, that that uh, out creature would have resistance to it. I'm like that feels. I'd like to see that more as a taunt mechanic. Like hmm. if 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 that wasn't like a hit, because that, that feels more like an aura to me. But if there was like this this taunt mechanic where the idea was, you know, you're you're challenging them so you know to such a, a level that they have to focus on you, kind of like the champion's challenge with an mm -hmm. oath of the crown paladin, that that would be more interesting to me. But I, I really cannot get behind the ancestral guardian at all. Like I I openly, openly, openly hate it, even though I recognize mechanically. It is arguably, it, it's up there among the best Barbarian classes. It's so, so, so good mechanically, but I would never play one. I, I hate it because it just doesn't feel like a Barbarian to me. See, for me, uh, like, that's the same reasoning why I dislike the archetype that I dislike. Yeah? But it is a different archetype. Uh, oh. But I'm, I'm realizing through this episode that what we both want out of Barbarians wildly yeah. different sure yeah wildly I, I, different i want rage i want rage and strength and power see and for me i like the i like the wild untrained fighter nature boy side of our barbarian more and i <laughs> so like you want, a, you want you want a you want a muscle ranger kinda which is which is and that's not a critique yeah that, that is not a critique at all i also i just like I, I think about barbarians as more than just the big axe. Well, sure, sure. Like, yeah. I, I think for you, you kind of look in this, like, um, individual of the land, maybe a wanderer. Mm -hmm. I can definitely see you having the outlander background for I mean, yeah. your barbarian. Whereas uh, my barbarian's background, it was a, like, sub-background of entertainer. I said gladiator. Right. Like, it, like feats of strength man like that's that's barbarian to me be strong and break shit and I, i'm dying to know which one you didn't like see i because of because it doesn't feel barbarian to me uh -huh. is the path of the zealot i'd say that's my that's my second favorite one <laughs> see because it it doesn't feel barbarian to me because yes you've got basically a mini divine smite in you but it's a mini divine smite. It is. Like, play a paladin. Like, and that's <laughs> that's how I that's how I feel about it. Is like mini divine smite. If you want that, play a paladin. Like, as because yes, the the it, the rage beyond death feature is cool. Oh the, man. The like the warrior yeah. of the gods feature is cool. Like you're not going to die. But at the same time, if you're picking path of the zealot you are a zealot of some higher power. And that feels less like a barbarian to me because like you're basically multi-classing into paladin. And you that's like it. It's, it's like, it's like Oathbreaker light. Kind. It, it really is. And yep. that's why, and that's really why I dislike it as an archetype is because like, you're not, you're just multi-class. <laughs> Just, just multi-class. <laughs> so, so, uh, are you gonna tell Ashley Johnson you don't like her character? Absolutely not. <laughs> I, 
I think it's a not great archetype, but she plays it amazingly. <laughs> it's, it, it is so funny that you say that's the other one, that, like that's the big one you don't like, because I, I was just talking about it with some folks yesterday that if I played a barbarian again, I probably would take the path of the zealot. Like mm-hmm. just the idea of, and again, so, so your idea where you're like, oh, it doesn't feel like a barbarian, it feels more like a paladin. Mm-hmm. And yes, I agree with you. It does have a mini divine smite, but my notion on it was that either some like great celestial being or some great uh, devil or, or demon being, mm-hmm. whatever, like saw this individual and their feats of strength and their ability to just, you know, mightily rage for what needs be is that mm-hmm. as long as they'll serve their greater purpose, they're helping keep this individual sort of alive forever. And I kind of think of the idea of the rage quest where mm-hmm. this bad thing happened and having a character, like so often players don't want to die, which is understandable. What if your character's end game was that they wanted to eventually be allowed to die? And they had to carry out all this violence so they could be allowed to die. That does sound like a character I would make. <laughs> and this is a character I would play. Like, but that's how I play a zealot. But, but, but I, I hear you on yeah. it feeling a little, a little paladin-y. Because it, it does. Yeah. It does. And, like, and, and that's not to say that I even think it's a bad archetype. Because, no. like, there are some classes that just have bad archetypes. Or had archetypes that were bad and were recently fixed and I'm very happy about it, but that's a future episode. It, um, is. it is. But it, it's just, to me, it's the least barbarian-y subclass of barbarian sure. for me. And that's why I like it the least. Because if I want to take a subclass, I want to make it, like, my characters being more of it, more specifically my character. And if I'm going to play a barbarian, why would I want to be a paladin like? I, I, I will give you one one potential counterpoint for how this uh, paladin light, as you put it, could totally work as a barbarian. Have you seen the movie Highlander? The fact that you would ask me that question. It's you know Kurgan. I've seen it. <laughs> it's the Kurgan! It is. It is 100% the Kurgan. It's the, it's the, again, the Kurgan's terrible, and he deserved to die, and, you know... You knew that uh, when he talks trash to uh, McLeod in the church, that it was already over. <laughs> Man, Highlander is a good movie. Love Highlander. You're not wrong. <laughs> but I mean, to me, that that's that that that's the Kurgan right there, or that's some sort of like ragey version of you know a Highlander. I see that. I but, totally see that. Again, this this is so like personal opinion because. You know, it's not a mechanics thing. This is, you know, w- w- the one yeah. I find more more interesting. But I'll I'm say, like, hey, at least it's not a protective shield uh, barbarian. I see you, Path, the Ancestral Guardian. Yeah. My barbarian's a team player, baby. <laughs> so is mine. It's just a one-man team. That's that's not that's not a team. <laughs> you You've worked a lot of jobs. You've gone to a lot of those nonsense team-building seminars that don't work. <laughs> And that's why I'm on my own team now, because team building is stupid. <laughs> that's that's the new barbarian that we need to play. The like <laughs> corporate barbarian. Oh, he man. used to be a merchant, and there was just one too many seminars. I mean, well, it's just one of the MFers from Office Space in the scene where they're giving it to the copy machine. <laughs> yes. Uh yeah, that's that's a barbarian to play. Oh my god. Yeah. Because there is the failed merchant uh, background now. Yep, yep, yep. Oh my god. So, so out of curiosity, as we, as we round up so, some barbarian conversation, mm. do you have a preferred weapon if you're playing a barbarian? Uh, like, like where, where do you lean as far as... Because with your starting gear, because mm. I'll be honest, if I'm playing anytime, either as a DM or a player, I don't ever want to start with gold. Let's do starting gear. No, just starting gear me. Like, and, and also partially because it gives me it gives me a pack it gives me a pack that has yep. a lot of shit in it and that's the biggest reason i want the starting gear it's not it's not the weapon it's just so i don't have to make sure i have rope and pitons mm-hmm. and a grappling hook and rations and all that i want it in my backpack so yep. starting gear for life 
but you get to start with any martial weapon you want mm -hmm. as a barbarian. Um, For me, I mean, as I mean, it's in the name, the great axe. It's a great axe. But me being who I am as a person, sure, I love to just slightly off kilter what most people will do, yeah. and that brings it brings me to either the great sword or the glaive. And and see, um, it would be very hard for me to ever not take the great axe again. Mm -hmm. My my beloved barbarian Takar, uh, he had a great axe. And it was a great axe. Yeah, and the biggest reason was you hit something, roll that d12. There are very few weapons you get to roll a d12 for. And there will be those that will tell you, well, you know, 2d6 gives you better odds for, you know, consistent damage. I will say that may be true, but you have a 1 in 36 chance of rolling a 12. I have a 1 in 12 chance of rolling a 12. Let's see who does 12 damage more often. Mm -hmm. Also, because he was a half-orc, if I crit, I got to roll the die one more time. If you're using that maul or that greatsword, you only get to roll one extra d6. Yep. You don't get to roll another 2d6. Because if you did, I would then say uh, the maul or greatsword is the best weapon. But mm -hmm. glaive is where we meet in the middle. Yeah, Glaive Man. is just super fun. Because like, it gives you a little bit of reach. It's also just cool. It is like, a cool looking weapon. You, st you still do a D10. Yeah. It has the heavy property, which means mm -hmm. that when you take Great Weapon Master, take Great Weapon Master. Just do it. Just, just do it. <laughs> great Weapon Master. But you can, use, you can use that weapon along with that. Also, mm -hmm. if you're one of those weirdos who likes Polearm Master, you can do that too. I'm one of those. That's fine. You see? I like... You I like the extra bonus action smack. <laughs> Which also works through rage damage. It does. Yep. There you go. And if you have Great Weapon Master, uh, you can make it work with that too. Yep. You can take a Great Weapon Master attack with that. But yeah, Great Weapon Master, uh, friggin' great. But the Glaive, you're still doing a D10. And that extra reach, that's what really gets it for me. Like The weapons I would stay away from are all the versatile weapons. You mm -hmm. know? And some will go, it's like, well, I mean, you can have a shield along with that. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. slow down, Paladin. See, now you're playing yeah. against the Guardian crap, where I was already talking about, where <laughs> so you're telling me you're going to play a Barbarian who has a shield and a one-handed weapon and has these abilities to protect their allies and make them take less damage and draw focus onto them. You're playing a paladin. You're not playing a barbarian. Sword that, and axe viking, opinion. baby. Yeah, that's my opinion. <laughs> I will die on that hill. However, <laughs> I also accept that's my opinion. And if I had a player at my table and they brought their barbarian and it was an ancestral guardian barbarian, I would be excited to see how they play it. Because here's the great thing. I don't have to play that character. Mm -hmm. I think that archetype sucks nuggets for me. But I'll, I'll never yuck someone else's yum for what right. they want to play as a character. If somebody yeah, somebody rolls up, oh, I'm playing this ancestral barbarian, I'm go cool. Like, do you have a backstory? Like, how, you know, what's that, what's the make of this character? That really makes me want to ancestral guardian sword and board the next time. <laughs> you know what? I, I I'll, I'll be down with it because here's the here's the thing. What I know about you, you're going to have a concept behind the character, like. This concept, though, could just be a Neubjorn. I mean, that's going <laughs> to be difficult, because simply, if it annoys me that much, all I have to do is just throw a monster at you you can't handle, and I eat you. That is that is fair. That's the thing. Never never annoy your DM too much, because they control the encounters. Many, many times you've thrown monsters at us that you thought we could handle, and my character still ended up getting eaten. If there's a kid, there's a monster that has the swallow feature, it'll get your character. Every time. Yeah. Because of you and your goddamn giant brass die. <laughs> oh, man. I love I love monsters that have the swallow feature. It's a non-barbarian thing, but a fun thing out there if you're a DM. If you can uh, you can swallow a character, make them take damage from inside something. But the, the, as a barbarian, the... grapple their spleen. Yep, yep. And you know what? <laughs> I would allow a nature check 
to see if you have any idea what a spleen is. And then I'd let you try and find it with this advantage. <laughs> but, you know, also the, the, the makeup of biology, you can't, you'd have to rip through a stomach wall to get through the spleen because the spleen's not in the stomach. Yeah, but, yeah, you and your science. <laughs> Shut up, wizard. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, that, that, that's all sciencey like biology that's a little more druid that is that you're you're right that is more druid yeah but still shut up nerd <laughs> <laughs> but, it's but barbarian no, day <laughs> shut up nerd I know, like, ah, <laughs> but yeah like w when it comes to me as a barbarian i i want to pick up a two-handed weapon do stupid amounts of damage and just you know uh crush my foes and hear the lamentations of their women mm -hmm. like that's we're gonna go. We're gonna go full Conan the Barbarian stuff. Mm -hmm. Like that's also. Right. Yep. Uh, there are some people on the internet that will try to tell you that the Storm Herald is a bad archetype, and they're wrong. It's so good. It's so good. If you just if you play the Storm Herald, my one piece of advice slash request would be have a little bit of backstory for why you choose the terrain you're going to choose. Mm -hmm. And if you want to get real, if you want to get real froggy, make the terrain not be kind of where your players from uh, mm -hmm. geography wise, so you can have some fun backstory stuff. But all three types are great. You get some extra damage resistances. You get some extra abilities. Uh, frankly, I think the coastal abilities are the best. It's so the... cool. Oh man. It's it's great, yeah. But yeah, just a little a little offshoot because there's so there's so many people on the internet that hate on the Storm Herald. You're I don't wrong. Get why? <laughs> like it, it's it, because they're min maxers. That's yeah. why. Yeah, it, min maxers it, it, hate the Storm Herald, and I don't care about min maxers. It, it it is definitely not for the um the the game stat nerd. I, I can see why yeah. why they don't love it. Um, frankly, it's just like basketball. I, I don't care about advanced stats. Play the game, yeah. Play the game. Like, when well, the thing is, when you get down to it, the the archetype that the most stat nerds are going to get all over, it's it's going to be the totem. Oh, one hundred percent of all of all barbarians. Like, if we were to come in here and talk about what is the best and what is the worst, odds are we both would have agreed that the totem is the best. Oh yeah. Because frankly, if you take bear at level three, you have resistance to all damage but psychic. Yep. That's potentially game changing in that you can now grapple something. And because you resist all these other damages, if you have a wizard in the party, you could flat out say, hey, you know what? Light them up with an area of effect spell. Yep. Because even if I fail my save, I'm only taking half damage, yep. which is mighty. And there's a good chance for overall mechanics. We may have both put the Berserker at the bottom because mm -hmm. Frenzy gives you exhaustion. But at the end of the day, when I'm playing that Berserker and I'm in that combat and I go, I'm going to Frenzied Rage. And ah. I'm, yeah, I'm attacking three, because if you're above level five, five level or above, yep. attacking three times with a great axe, rolling at advantage. So every time you hit, you get to roll that D12 and add all your modifiers. You just feel powerful. You, you do. You feel like the undefeatable chopping machine. Yeah, and, and so, you're a you know, par you're a proper Cuisinart. You are, you are. <laughs> so if, if you are gonna play a Berserker, like obviously, just you know, I'm not saying I'm an expert on it. Like I, I just had fun, but I would save my frenzy if I knew, hey, this is a boss fight or this is clearly a big battle. That's when I break it out. And man, if you ever crit on that bonus action attack. Mm -hmm. You kind of feel like a genius because like ah ha 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 I I crit on that one and Look at the... and as a DM, mini bosses. Yep. <laughs> well, actually, that's a fun little DM tip. Uh, throw mini bosses at your players sometimes, not just to expend resources because that's a fun thing to do to your players. Make them expend their resources, but give your players those little victories. Let yep. them have a let them have a mini boss. It doesn't mean that much to your overall story. But it'll be a good challenge for them. Mm -hmm. They'll beat up on it. You know deep down they're going to win. Yep. But they get to feel tough and cool before the bigger challenge comes along. Speaking of little victories, mm -hmm. we do have the little victory of 
this is this is episode 17 for us like it is we've we've continued through past our uh the winter break which often uh kills shows yeah. often people don't come back from it we did baby because we're here for you we'll be here thursdays 5 30 unless things change but we'll let you know uh they but... shouldn't because i have told work and there is there is one uh group that i may potentially start rehearsing with i already told them i can't rehearse thursdays mm -hmm. because it's a priority to me but next week bards yep next week we talk about the glorious beautiful bards yeah. uh i i quite enjoy bards this will be fun yeah uh, I so yeah. no no overlap this week. No overlap between the uh, yuck or yum. Yeah, which is a surprise for me because we're we're pretty we're usually pretty in line. I'll, I'll be interested to see if there's any overlap with, with bards. Uh, there probably will. I don't think there will be because I think the one I hate. You're gonna have so many reasons why you love because I already know what it's gonna be. All so right, I'm that. excited. I'm excited then. Uh, so yeah, that's it for us this week. Thank you it for is. watching Dice Jailers. Thank you. Uh, don't forget to, uh, if there's, I don't know, an episode you want to hear again, catch up on our YouTube. All our episodes are there, except for the fabled mythical episode that uh, is lost to the annals of time. It is, but there are those who saw it and they agree. It was possibly the greatest thing ever on the internet. True. Yeah. And so before we go, what do we always say, Bjorn? Do something nice for yourself this weekend. Let's go. <sighs> Have a good 2021, everybody.